from the title of this video, I think we all know that we're going to get into some territory that can be considered quite triggering, so this is your verbal and visual warning. If you don't think that you can handle discussions on eating disorders, behaviors done by people with eating disorders or disordered eating habits, the fetishization of anorexia and eating disorders as a whole, as well as other fucked up shit basically containing grooming and pro ana material, I highly recommend that you do not watch this video. Please make your well-being a priority with this. We need to talk about Eugenia Cooney and not in the aspect of she needs help because let's be honest for a second, a lot of people have already discussed that in great detail. Her friends in real life have notably done an intervention with her. And to be completely honest, saying she needs help is pretty much an understatement at this point. And to say this in the nicest way I can, I don't think she's going to get help until she is forced to get help, so saying she needs help is a rather moot point. We need to talk about Eugenia Cooney due to a rather interesting history of harmful behavior, as well as recent stints which have turned to pandering for a certain audience. The more gross fetishization of eating disorders, and specifically anorexia, on her kid-friendly channel. Now before we get into it, and because people will question why you're talking about something, unless you of course trauma dump about it, because it gives you validity or something of that sort, I am discussing this as someone who has had eating issues throughout the last good portion of her life pretty much, as well as somebody who actually saw Eugenia Cooney a lot in Thinspo on Tumblr. I'm saying eating issues because I was never diagnosed with an eating disorder when talking to my therapists because, not to make a joke of it, that was kind of the least of their concerns. I think some of the other stuff was of uh, greater importance than me drastically losing weight in high school. I was underweight my sophomore year of high school and I believe my first year of college when I was attending community college as well as right after graduating high school. And this was all through me doing very drastic shit in order to lose weight. And more recently in the spring 2020 semester of college, I basically relapsed again and started doing even more fucked up shit to lose weight. It was basically that spring semester into the summer because I'm gonna be honest, COVID did not help me whatsoever regarding that. And while I didn't get underweight during this time, I exhibited all the same behaviors that I did originally in high school when I was underweight, as well as adopted a really bad one, to be completely honest. I'm not gonna go into immense detail about everything I did because I don't want anyone to fucking copy me, but to explain it as briefly as possible, I was restricting calories, over-exercising, fasting for very, very long periods of time, body checking in pretty much every reflective surface that I came across. I started using diet pills in excessive amounts and not the way they are told to be used. And I started purging in college. Those are just some of the things I did. There is more than that, but I do not want to get into it because I don't want anyone to copy the behaviors I did. I don't want to give anyone any ideas because honestly, this shit will stick with you. And I'm sorry if I'm like smiling or stuff like that. This is very awkward for me. I've never discussed this really. I associate working out with an all or nothing thing in terms of I can't just work out for 30 minutes. I have to work out until I burn everything I ate off. I immediately associate eating healthier and just cutting back on stuff as restricting as much as I can in just bare minimum calories, essentially. Basically, again, another all or nothing mentality I have. Every time I go to the bathroom after eating, I will impulsively body check and point out every single part of my body that I do not like, and it is a fight to pretty much not purge. And the one thing that sticks with me, like even just thinking and talking about this, is at my lowest weight, which was about 120 to 119 pounds, I could have been less like that that first year of college, but I didn't have a scale at the time, is I only saw myself as the larger version of myself. Which, mind you, the larger version of myself when I was in high school going through all this was the 135 pound, pretty much all muscle because I was on swim team kind of person. And 135 pounds is very healthy for my height. This is something I've struggled with and still do to this day. As I mentioned, I had a relapse in spring of 2020 and it's still very hard for me because I technically am overweight now and as I'm trying to lose weight and to get into a more healthy weight zone, all I can think of is going back into those habits. Like these thoughts are always going to be in the back of my head whenever it comes to losing any kind of weight. But what else is in the back of my head is how Eugenia Cooney was used as thinspo on Tumblr for the longest time when I was on that side of Tumblr in high school. And with everything recently going on, I think it would be rather negligent to not discuss how this is impacting people. And more so how what she's doing is 
genuinely harmful. Now getting back on track, when I say that there is a history of harmful behavior, I mean specifically two things have happened. Eugenia Cooney's Discord situation, in summary, and her recent reading hate comments video, which is a lot to take in. So first up is the Discord situation, which as I said, I'm going to summarize because a lot of other people have already gone into very great detail on it. Eugenia Cooney basically had convicted felons as moderators of her Discord server, one of them stalking an individual in the server, and when this was brought to Eugenia's attention, she basically brushed it off and told them to go report it to authorities if it gets too serious. Which, let's be fair, stalking is serious. One of her mods also talked on Twitch about how they were super lenient with a guy despite people reporting him for misconduct and targeting women while harassing them through talking about his privates and private messages to them, which her content panders to younger audiences, so more than likely talking to minors in this way. As well as talking about how Ahmad was talking to girls about thigh gaps and stuff like that, which to me screams that she had people who were pro-Anna or would call themselves Anna coaches as mods. Now if you don't know what an Anna coach is, it is basically somebody who talks to relatively younger girls that are trying to achieve their ultimate goal weight, and basically coaches them and tells them how they can go about doing this. An Anna coach will typically ask the person for pictures in order to degrade them and it is typically used to motivate them. Now those pictures can range from just pictures of them in, you know, a bra and underwear because these are typically women that they target, or naked. This can be a form of sexual gratification for the Anna coach and you will typically see these people throughout the eating disorder community on Tumblr. That was very prevalent when I was a part of it. And they will often target minors due to them being incredibly naive and wanting to basically do anything to lose weight. Again, I'm talking about this as someone who was on Tumblr during this time when Anna coaches were incredibly prevalent, so please trust me when I say that these fuckers are 100% bad news. Now, if you want a more in-depth discussion of the entire Discord situation, I highly recommend iNabber's videos as they are honestly incredibly detailed. But overall, while the Discord server was eventually shut down, Eugenia Cooney kind of really didn't take any responsibility for this going on and instead kind of shifted blame and played victim throughout the entire situation, and this can specifically be seen in her addressing the Discord Discord situation video. The video is what she deems to be her side of the situation, yet a lot of it is pushing blame off of herself and just deflecting it as she's just as much of a victim as the literal victims of these people. Overall, to put it bluntly, due to her negligence. Her stream really did just not go smoothly at all. And then also when I ended up first opening my Discord server, it was kind of that same experience which is people posting horrible things and a lot of people are posting like super, super inappropriate things. And I think again, like racist comments and just stuff that obviously I would not want being posted. So with that being said, I knew that if I wanted to keep my Discord server up, that I was definitely gonna need to get a couple of moderators to help me out with this problem. Also with the time back on Twitch, I really only had one moderator at first who was just a friend of mine. I felt really bad that just kind of like all of this was being placed upon one person because like I said, my first stream was definitely pretty messy. So as I was thinking of people that could help with this free service, by the way, because um, I definitely was not paying anybody or hiring anyone and all of this was just volunteer. Um, there was one guy from my you now days that offered to help me out. So he told me that he was a professional Twitch moderator um, and that he modded for a lot of other streamers, which apparently he did mod for other streamers at the time. I don't think he does anymore. But basically this was a guy that knew me from before, was knowledgeable about the platform and wanted to help me out. So it seemed like a perfect and really easy solution. And where that was the case, I was also making my Twitch moderators, Discord moderators. So that's how he also ended up being a moderator on my Discord. Well, most of you probably know where this is going or where this ended up going from here. And this perfect and easy solution ended up being a massive problem. So it started really slowly at first and I started seeing a couple of messages about how this guy may have been a predator. From what I found out later, I also found out that he was actually trying to ban people from my Discord server that were kind of trying to speak out about that. So I wasn't even able to see a lot of those messages, unfortunately. So these messages were super disturbing to me, but I would also never want to accuse somebody of something so serious without proof. So I ended up asking him about it and it was uncomfortable, but I knew I had to do that. So in his messages, he explained to me that none of this was true and that he was just being set up. 
So I really wanted to believe him where in the past he seemed really nice, but something about this still just made me feel really uncomfortable with this whole situation. And then just a few days later, somebody ended up sending me something that did look like what was actual proof that these allegations against him were true and the stuff that people were saying against him was true. And this was all I needed to know in regards to my relationship with him. So after I found out this info, I immediately told him that I could not work with him in any capacity anymore. So basically because this was all free and she was just looking for volunteers and as she said an easy solution to this, she kind of just accepted anybody and didn't really look into them. And even though this person was somebody who was following her for quite some time, she still didn't care to look into who this person was. Which, sure enough, they were actually a predator this whole time. And apparently she needed a lot of convincing despite a ton of people coming forward about this one person. Regardless of what she says on this situation, this shouldn't have happened and this just shows negligence on her part. Because really, it doesn't matter that she was just accepting volunteers, she still, at the end of the day, should have looked into who she was putting basically as responsible for her Discord server, and in turn having power over everybody in her fan base on said server. But she doesn't take responsibility for this and just kind of plays victim throughout the video and saying that she didn't know any better. But you're a grown adult, Eugenia, you should definitely know at least a little bit better than that. It's very apparent at this point that shitty people exist on the internet and the fact that you wanted to create a space for your fans, which is all well and good, but didn't have the time nor the care to look into who you were putting in charge of them is very irresponsible because you put a random person in a position of power and since they've abused it, it is on you because you didn't do your job as someone who wanted to create this space to make it safe for everyone. So we can see with the recent Discord situation that Eugenia Cooney has been rather negligent in creating an actual safe space for her fans and has more pretty much welcomed predators into it. When you fail to do a check on it, you are kind of just welcoming that happening, which is a big deal because I would definitely say that your content really caters to a younger audience. So the people who were actually the victims of this situation were minors more than likely. And as you quite literally displayed in your video, you really are not taking an ounce of responsibility for this happening. Playing into the unfortunately ever-present victim complex that you will see a lot throughout this video unfortunately and you're specifically going to see a lot of it in this next part now the next thing i want to talk about is her recent addressing hate video which she made about two months ago which is something she used to do way more often and she said she wanted to do more because her viewers liked this content and throughout the video she rarely looks at the camera and is often looking within the viewfinder which to me screams body checking she changes where she stands throughout the video rather often to get full body shots of her which again scream body checking to me and she truly compares actually blunt concern with rather rude comments. You shouldn't drive. You're a hazard due to poor health. You could literally pass out at any moment. Um, okay, so first of all, I really don't think I'd be passing out while driving, guys. And second of all, let's say for some reason I felt like I was gonna pass out. Not that I probably would or anything like that, but if I was, it's like I wouldn't be in the car at that moment. So you could pass out and hurt others, and then like other people, they're just like, you're right. Now there's a chance that you'll die while driving and kill other people too. And I don't know, I feel kind of bad like reading those sometimes guys, that like some of you guys think I'm like such a problem or like hazard I guess on the road. So some of these people in the comments I think they're trying to like imitate how I talk. Like like thank you so so much you guys. It's so super super nice of like you guys to watch me slowly die. Like oh my gosh. And like, well anyways, I hope you tune into Twitch where you can help me pick out a super, super cute outfit to like, to like, like wear in my coffin. And yay, uh, I think they're kind of like imitate the way I talk or something. I don't know guys, I mean if the way I talk annoys you, I'm really sorry. LOL, the pill shirt on a crackhead looking girl is too much. This reminds me of an SNL skit. Girl, stop, you look crazy. And they're just like, yeah, whatever that means. No offense to anyone that's ever done crack because like I don't judge anybody, but I've never done crack actually, just so you know, so yeah. So this clip is very obviously not the full video. However, that just gives you a taste as to how she is pairing literal blunt concern with actually rather rude comments. This frames it so that every comment is perceived to be specifically hate when genuinely that doesn't seem to be the case at all. There is also a very obvious undertone of gaslighting throughout this video, but it can specifically be seen through this clip. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm sorry to this person. 
I guess they're just kind of like waiting for me to die. Sometimes I see these kind of comments of like, I don't know, I mean, sorry that they think that, I mean, I don't think I'm gonna die anytime soon or anything, but I mean, yeah, um, uh, sorry that they think that I'm so bad for the world. Let's be honest for a second, this is not a person in good health. This is not a person who is recovered or is taking any steps to recover at all. The whole video, especially when she's addressing people who are basically telling her she's going to die, really feels like she's saying, Come on guys, you're crazy, I'm in like peak health, everything is totally fine about me, there is nothing to be concerned about at all. To me, it just personally screams gaslighting and her trying to normalize where she's at when Honestly, no medical professional would probably see this and think, oh yeah, that right there is a person in absolute peak health. This is the normal body for an almost 30-year-old woman. Now this can definitely be because of her disorder still, because your eating disorders do kind of distort your reality. As I've already said, when I was at my lowest weight, I still saw myself as the heavy teenager I was back then. Heavy in big quotes, that's how I saw myself. I don't mean to say that 130 pounds is heavy for my height. That's just how my brain saw it. This could also be because of her parents clearly enabling her as well as the people around her enabling her, making her feel that this is completely normal and fine. So therefore she then thinks, okay, I'm totally fine. I'm totally normal. Everything's good. And she clearly thinks this or she wouldn't be acting the way she does within these videos. And she's clearly not open to people telling her it's not because everyone around her is telling her it is. And, you know, if you tell her that this isn't normal, you're just a hater. So to summarize this, Eugenia Cooney has a history of harmful behavior due to the fact that her Discord situation actually ended up hurting a couple people through predators being a part of it, and her not taking really any accountability for her server having literal predators as moderators on it. As well as actively body checking throughout her recent addressing hate video, paired with putting rather blunt criticism next to rather rude comments to make it seem that everything is just hate. So over Overall, her history of harmful behavior can really be marked off with negligence as well as constantly coming out as the victim in situations even where she's very clearly not the victim, while also deflecting any sort of concern or even criticism as purely hate. With all that being said, we now have to jump into the more gross territory, which is how in her recent videos she is more than likely playing into the fetishization of eating disorders, specifically her shoe haul as well as her summer outfits haul, but we're gonna jump a little bit into her past live streams as well. But unfortunately, before we can actually get into that, we need to discuss what anorexia and eating disorder fetishes actually are. So basically, it is being into people who are extremely and more than likely unhealthily underweight, and really just kind of plays on degradation, sometimes a torture aspect by putting those with the eating disorder into some rather painful situations, being into them suffering and struggling through various means, and also just putting them into very sexual situations. Some are into the torture side, some are into the more relationship aspect with that person, and some are probably just into getting off on seeing somebody that fragile. Now this is just the very simple definition of all this. If you want to go more into it, I highly recommend of Herbs and Alters video on the entire subject. It is very in-depth and very gross, to be honest. They also go into the idea that these people are pretty much also pedophiles, which I briefly touched on in the reference of Anna coaches. And it's overall a very rough video, but I would highly recommend looking into it if you want to know more about this very disgusting fetish. So starting with the My Shoe Collection 2021 video, she consistently flashes the camera throughout a good majority of the video. The number of times she basically flashed the camera is upwards of 20 times, however, they are held for very long periods of time, so I could have that number wrong, but that is a rough estimate of how many times she did this. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this being a shoe haul excuses that action whatsoever. There are plenty of ways to show off the shoes that you're wearing while wearing a skirt without flashing the camera consistently in the upwards of 20 times. Again, throughout this video, she is constantly looking at the viewfinder and is rarely looking at the actual camera lens. I'd give her the benefit of the doubt in saying that she kind of struggles with eye contact like me maybe, and maybe that's why she's not looking at the camera. But again, this is consistent 
a lot of her videos and I specifically pointed it out for the addressing hate video. Meaning that this is rather typical and I think it is a safe assumption to say she's probably body checking when she's looking at the viewfinder and not the camera. Also to me personally, a lot of her movements are body checking-esque throughout this video. Meaning I don't know if she was necessarily body checking, but to me that looked like it. Specifically when she's grabbing her legs in certain parts of the video, it does remind me of how I used to check certain body parts to see if I needed to lose weight there or how much more weight I needed to lose there. She could also just be holding her leg because the shoe on her foot was providing some like strain for her muscles and she wanted to kind of alleviate that. But I still think the possibility of that being body checking is important to point out because again, if I can see that as body checking from things that I used to do back when I was like deep in this shit, I think it's more than likely that she was doing the same thing. Especially when you pair this with the flashing and the whole anorexia fetishist thing, the two things would kind of go hand in hand with one another. But of course people went out of their way to defend Eugenia Cooney literally flashing pretty much throughout the entire video in the dumbest ways possible. <laughs> and I'd specifically like to highlight this comment because the absolute brain deadedness of it is astounding. God, who cares? It's just underwear. Not every part of a woman's body should be treated like a sin against humanity. God, guys, please just let this person who is clearly pandering to eating disorder fetishists online just live their life. Like, I know she's flashing a pretty young audience, but it's no big deal. You only care because she's a woman and anything a woman does is a sin against humanity. I really can't imagine having this brain dead of a fucking take in regards to somebody quite literally flashing their audience multiple times throughout a video because it wasn't like it was one time and it was a very obvious like slip and forgetting to edit that this was multiple times throughout the same fucking video and again I would really like to reiterate that her content does kind of pander to a younger audience more so than an older one and I really think making this a this is because she's a woman issue is rather dumb in the grand scheme of things especially you know with the whole fetishization of eating disorders they being discussed at this point. Next is the Summer Outfits 2021 video, which promptly features her labia majora in the thumbnail. Which, if you don't know what the labia majora is, it is not the, like, lips lips of the vagina, but the outer lips before you get to the lips lips. I'm not a sex ed teacher, clearly, but if you go on Google and type in the female genital diagram, you will more than likely see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to have Susan smite me for what sex ed should have done. So throughout this video, we can quite literally see her again pandering to anorexia fetishists, literally through the thumbnail, simply. This video also has the same different positions and different stances to show off her entire outfit or to more than likely body body check given how she acts within the video, and the ever-present looking at the viewfinder and not the camera lens, which again to me screams like she's body checking. Which and this is my opinion, and I'm gonna be very blunt about it, seems to be kind of the goal for the majority of her videos. Oh, and by the way, this was actually promoted on YouTube's trending page. I think I failed to mention that and that is a rather important thing to note, is that this was, again, on the trending page. So to go more into it, per YouTube being the hell site it is, Eugenia Cooney's video actually made it onto the trending page on YouTube, as pointed out by Jacqueline Glenn, who was actually one of the people that initiated the intervention in which Eugenia actually originally got help. Now a lot of people pointed out that this video was actually rather low on the trending page, but I think the point still stands that her labia majora was out in the thumbnail, and it still made it onto the trending page on YouTube. And again, as someone who suffered through very bad eating issues in high school and recently, this still screams body checking to me. Now YouTube did what it typically does and recommended people to report the video if they think anything is actually wrong with it. But if we're being honest here, which we are, this is YouTube just basically saying, yeah, you can report it, but it doesn't mean we're gonna do anything about it per usual. You know, made very apparent through the number of people who commented under that saying that they did report it and nothing's been done still. We love a hell site that could barely function but loves to pretend that it's functioning quite well. Now I think it's important to know that this phenomenon of Eugenia basically flashing the camera is really nothing new in retrospect. As you can see in these pictures, which are from Eugenia's You Now live streams, the platform she used before Twitch, this was also something she would do there. And it was also something she's done in an older Instagram post as well, showing that this isn't just a random accident, this is a consistent thing that is just part of her presence online at this point. So when you have Eugenia Cooney doing all of this stuff, as well as the fact that she very clearly has predators in her platform, as seen through the recent situation with her Discord. I don't think her doing all this is like far-fetched to say as pandering to predators that are very clearly in her audience and trying to keep them captive 
captivated with her because she's very blatantly aware that she has these predators in her audience given the discord situation and how much that blew up so now it just feels that she's just putting more into that to keep them there now with all of this being said of course people are going to be defending eugenia cooney and they have been defending her very vigorously throughout the very typical let her be she's living her life let her live her life freely in her body criticizing her won't help or my personal favorite if you don't like the content don't watch it and honestly i'm going to be very blunt with this for a second and this might actually piss some people off but I genuinely don't care. At this point, people calling her out for the things that she's doing isn't because people are mad at her for living her life, living her life in the body she's living in, hating on her, or any other lame excuse you can think of. Really, at this point, the discussion has evolved into getting somebody who is being genuinely harmful, whether they mean to or not, off of the internet, so there's no more collateral damage. It doesn't take a doctor to look at Eugenia Cooney and say that she is basically in a very dangerous state right now, and to pretend that she's been this way for a while is a load of horse shit. Not to bring up Shane Dawson's documentary because I can make an entire video about how bad his documentaries are, but during this time, she was doing better. And that was because of the fact that the people within her life at that time were not enabling her to continue this stuff and wanted her to actually get better and staged an intervention. This intervention made her go to an ed clinic and receive treatment then after her hold. And to go back into the documentary, it truly seems that she saw this as a very easy way to return to YouTube because she was better at that time. Because while people were still bringing up her health, it was more in a positive way than in a negative and concerned way. And after this documentary came out and she made her very big return to YouTube, she started to lose weight again. So as you can see in the pictures displayed on the screen, the one titled I'm Back is her first video after getting help. In this picture, you can see her face as well as parts of her body that are showing don't have her bones showing as much as they are in the summer outfits video. Her face was fuller and she looked so much healthier in the I'm Back video and to hear her talk about how healthy she is now and saying she's not going to die soon in the Addressing Hate comments video, it really is just a total lie from these two comparisons and how literally she looks completely different after getting help to now. So overall, I do not think Eugenia Cooney is going to be getting help anytime soon. And this is because of various factors. A lot of people have pointed to her parents saying that they enable her. A lot of people are pointing to like everybody else around her basically enabling her actions as well. There is also the underlying idea that she is just so deep into this. Her reality is just completely distorted. And I can honestly say I have no doubt that all of these things are true. And I can also say that I don't think she is going to get help for these reasons unless something drastic happens. That being health complications or the people still involved in her lifestyle stepping forward and not enabling this behavior to continue. However, while being sympathetic towards her and understanding that she is going through a lot, and just overall knowing that Eugenia Cooney does need help, we can also say that she is a grown adult. She is almost 30 years old. And it's time to stop pretending that the things she's doing recently in videos are innocent little accidents and just letting it slide due to the fact that she's ill. She completely dropped the ball with her Discord server and really let predators just kind of prey upon her audience through that time. And not to mention that even when people were sending in proof regarding this, she still bared on the side of caution in a sense and agreed with the predator for a while until a certain point. She is doing rather body checking esque behaviors on film despite constantly saying that she is recovered and completely healthy. She has begun flashing very, very consistently consistently and frequently within her videos, which seemingly panders towards the anorexia fetishes that she knows people have within her audience, let alone doing this knowing that she has a very young audience. There are a lot of things wrong other than just her health. And to go without talking about the harm that it does as well as what has been done in terms of harm, it really just drives the idea that because she's ill, she's immune to any kind of like consequences for her actions and that she's immune to doing anything bad. But with these situations in mind, that clearly isn't the case. Eugenia Cooney is somebody who is severely ill. I don't think we can really take her saying that she's fully recovered seriously, considering we know what she was like recovered in comparison to now, as well as her saying that her parents say she's okay, which is very clearly enabling her to keep doing this. And let's face the facts, no professional would look at her and say that she's in perfect condition for an adult. However, at this point, Eugenia Cooney isn't just harming herself, she is putting her viewers also in harm's way or has already put them in harm's way with the Discord situation in mind. And she's seemingly doing this even more now through pandering to anorexia fetishists, through flashing, 
consistently in her videos. While clearly knowing that she has predators in her audience through the fact that the Discord situation happened. And to push all of that to the side because we don't want to criticize someone who is ill or anything like that, is beyond negligent. Because just due to the fact that she is struggling with her health or is severely into this eating disorder does not excuse the harm she's caused, took part in causing, or is inevitably going to cause people. And this is all through the behaviors she's displayed in her recent videos, as well as how she handled that entire Discord situation. Just because you are mentally ill does not excuse you from having consequences to your actions. And from the idea of her doing stuff recently in order to pull predators into to her audience and appealing to them more through flashing, this only poses a greater risk to her audience because the predators are not going to keep going towards her, they're eventually going to go towards the fan base that is rather vulnerable in order to seek fulfillment. And for this reason alone, I genuinely do think it's time that YouTube kind of steps up and does something regarding her platform. Whether it be actually looking into the reports being made against her account for once instead of just letting it slide, or removing her from the platform altogether. Anyways, that is going to do it for this video. Like always, please do not go out of your way to harass anyone I talked about in this video, and more specifically, Yuji Yakuni. She really kind of just feeds on that and uses it to really push the idea that anybody who criticizes her is a hater, so I highly recommend that if you do not like what you've seen and you do want to do something about it, you should report the content instead of commenting anything. Now that I know there is probably going to be a discussion based on the fact that I did say that she should get removed from the platform if YouTube decides to do that, and I truly do understand the arguments that are taking place where people are saying that if her content gets removed, then there's really no good place to draw the line at where other content creators should also have their content removed if they are appearance-wise looking a little unsafe weight-wise. But I also think that with this argument, there is the argument to be made that Eugenia Cooney's content has been promoted by YouTube and put on the trending page, displayed to a larger group of people that typically would not see her content more than likely. Other big name YouTubers have or will work with Eugenia Cooney, thus exposing her to their audience. And because a lot of this discussion is geared toward, well, are fat people gonna get removed from the platform? I fail to see anyone on the opposite side of that spectrum being somebody who is basically doing theater stuff promoted and that big as Eugenia Cooney. To me, this argument fails to see that feeder content has not been put on the trending page, has not been promoted openly by YouTube, and I've failed to see any feeder content be as big as Eugenia Cooney. And if somebody were like that that exists out there, my point still stands. The moment you begin to pander to fetishists on your quote-unquote kid-friendly channel, you deserve to get the boot, regardless of what end of the spectrum you're on in terms of body image and pertaining to weight. Which is the other thing, this isn't even just as she's unhealthily skinny anything anymore. This has turned into a clearly violating community guidelines, considering I had to censor a lot of the flashing, so I won't get age restricted. She's not age restricted, but knowing my luck, I would be. I understand how touchy of a subject this is, considering how gray a lot of YouTube's policies are, but I really do feel that in a situation such as this one, where we've seen her after receiving treatment and then at her pretty much worst. The difference is truly clear as day. I personally don't feel bad about telling people to report her content if they feel the need to because of her negligence on the platform as she is displayed, as well as the continuous body checking, as well as flashing within her videos now. There's also an argument kind of being said that if we don't talk about Eugenia Cooney, every problem regarding her will go away on its own, which is just blatantly not going to happen. Let's be honest, the Discord situation got handled because a lot of people were talking about it, and now there is clearly some pandering towards fetishists within her videos, and I don't think not talking about it is gonna make it go away. Because while I definitely understand the idea that attention will make her act out, attention is also the reason that stuff gets handled, so I don't think this is a very cut and dry situation. And saying that a more passive option is viable, to me at least, doesn't seem like the smart choice here. Overall, I truly don't think that Eugenia Cooney is going to change her ways anytime soon until something drastic happens, which hopefully it won't. In the sense of being life-threatening, if somebody were to step in and intervene again, that is not as drastic as death. But recently with everything that she's been doing and how some of it very clearly violates the community guidelines on YouTube, I kind of think it's time YouTube just kind of stops pussyfooting around and treats popular content creators the way they do everyone else. Wishful thinking very clearly given the fact that people have been reporting her content and YouTube still will never do anything about it, but you know, it apparently be like that on this fucking hell site. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. I am very sorry for the serious video. I know I kinda led that I was gonna be uploading something a little bit more fun, but you know, sometimes you actually have to be serious and address shit that's 
actually kind of a problem. But a more fun video is gonna come up next. I feel like that's kind of necessary after talking about literal eating disorder fetishes. But yeah, that is gonna do it for this video. And until that next video, I will see you guys later. Bye.